friends, today our topic is segregation of concrete. From the time of mixing and finishing, concrete is subjected to transportation, placing and compaction. During this time, the mixture must remain uniform throughout. If it doesn't remain uniform, then it means that the ingredients are subjected to a process known as segregation. Segregation means separation of constituent materials and concrete. Here, constituent materials include coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, cement and water. It means that there is variation of coarse aggregate content at different places as coarse aggregate forms bulk volume of concrete when compared to other materials. This forms an unworkable concrete which lacks homogeneity and induces undesirable properties in hardened concrete. Segregation may happen due to two reasons, internal reasons and external reasons. Internal reasons include density and specific gravity, whereas external reasons may be due to transportation, jolting, height of dropping, vibration, etc. Specific gravity of each materials are different. Specific gravity is the ratio of density of the substance to that of the density of standard substance. The materials with high density has more weight which tends to pull them down when compared to those materials with low density. In this case, coarse aggregates are the materials having highest density when compared to fine aggregates and cement. Therefore, fine aggregate and cement slurry stays at the top whereas coarse aggregates tends to move down. These are various other external reasons that causes segregation of concrete. Incorrect proportioning of concrete mix leads to segregation. There are various methods used to transport concrete from one place to another depending upon the type of the works done. In case of smaller jobs, concrete is carried out in mortar pans. To carry concrete to moderate distances, wheelbarrows may be used. Concrete is transported to medium heights by using hoist and buckets. Ready mix concrete is pumped using concrete pumps, pipes or boom places. When the distance from the batching plant and the site is more, it takes more time for transportation of concrete that leads to stiffness in concrete which in turn causes segregation. The process that takes place when concrete is made to be transported is called jolting. When concrete is transported either from bottom to top or from one place to another place using conveyor belts, wheelbarrows, long lifts, etc., the materials in concrete will be shaken. When it is shaken continuously, coarse aggregate separates out from the cement slurry causing segregation. Dropping of concrete from heights as in case of placing concrete in columns will result in segregation. Concrete must be dropped from minimum 1 meter height. If height greater than 1 meter is dropped, then the fine aggregates and cement paste will separate from the coarse aggregates and fall down separately. Vibration of concrete is one of the most important methods of compaction. It should be noted that dry mix should be vibrated. If too wet mix is excessively vibrated, then the concrete gets segregated. Vibration must be done only for a required period of time for optimum results. Too much of vibration, especially in a very wet mix, results in segregation of concrete where coarse aggregate tends to move down and cement slurry stays at the top. In recent times, we use concrete with very high slump, particularly in ready mix concrete. The slump value required at batching point is 150 mm and at pumping point would be around 100 mm. Cubes are casted at both these points. Hence, care must be taken during compaction of cubes with high slump concrete, failing of which leads to segregation and decrease in strength. Segregation may be of three types. First type is the coarse aggregates settling down from the rest of the matrix. Second type is the paste or the matrix separating away from the coarse aggregates. And the last type is the water getting separated out from the rest of the material which is also known as bleeding of concrete. This picture shows the coarse aggregates separating out from the cement slurry. The coarser and heavier particles tend to separate out or settle down from the rest of the matrix because they tend to travel faster along a slope or settle down faster more than the finer materials. This type of segregation may occur if the concrete mix is too dry, that is, addition of water in the concrete mix is lower than that is specified in the concrete mix design. From this picture, we can see that the cement slurry is separating out from rest of the material because of its lowest specific gravity. 
This type of segregation occurs if concrete mix is too wet, that is, addition of water in concrete mix is greater than that is specified in the concrete mix design. This picture evidently shows the third type of segregation where water settles at the surface of the concrete leaving behind the cement slurry. Segregation factor can be found using uniaxial tensile strength and the heap test. If segregation factor is closer to unity, then it means that the milder is the tendency of segregation. Sometimes poor quality shuttering materials are used to form concrete members. Generally, cement slurry gets out from broken side of form work which causes honeycombing as a result of segregation. Segregation also gives a low performance concrete which leads to less homogeneity and formation of shrinkage cracks. Various factors influence the segregation of concrete. Cement paste must be cohesive enough to hold the materials together and cause dispersion in them. In case of high water cement ratio, the paste will be too thin to hold the materials together. Hence, water flows away from other materials leading to wet segregation. In case of insufficient water cement ratio, the paste will be too dry and again it can't hold the materials together which causes dry segregation. Hence, too wet or too dry concrete mixes must not be used. Nominal size of aggregates must be 25 mm. The higher the size of aggregates, higher will be the tendency to segregation. Segregation is caused due to the use of low fine fractions of sand and low cement content. Unfavorable shape of aggregates also influences segregation of concrete. Tendency for segregation can be remedied from the following ways. First one is by correctly proportioning the mix. The coarse aggregates, fine aggregates, cement and water must be mixed in correct proportions to form a cohesive paste which doesn't allow cement slurry and the aggregates to fall apart from each other. Segregation can be reduced by proper placing and transporting. Placing concrete from 1 meter height and reducing the transportation time consequently reduces the segregation of concrete. Tendency of segregation can be reduced by handling concrete with proper care and better understanding. At any stage, if segregation is observed, remixing for a short time would make concrete homogeneous again. While finishing concrete floors or pavements, in order to obtain a smooth surface, masons work too much with trowels immediately on placing concrete, which presses the coarse aggregates down, resulting in the movement of excess space to the top surface. Hence, time interval must be followed before placing concrete. Concrete must be compacted with vibrators only for a required period of time to prevent segregation of concrete. In the next video, we will be exploring about the third type of segregation known as bleeding in detail. Until then, stay connected. Thank you for watching.